We spent most yesterday really looking at the campus uh, budgets, trying to sort of see how they were able to adapt to uh, this near new year budget. Had slight reduction in uh, state funds, we've had some tuition increases, and how they were going to be responding to um, making sure we provide the services to our students. I really just wanted to talk about how as we're working through between now and uh, next year's legislative session is looking at the funding formula, what kind of revisions that we need to make, uh, what the best practices are nationally, and how to move forward with that. And I think that's going to require not only just looking at information, but having a good conversation with all the players so that we can all get on the same page. I know the legislature would be glad to support higher education initiatives, but they really want to make sure that we're all on the same page and we want to do the same thing. The form incentives in Louisiana are really in three parts. Uh, the funding formula has a component, certainly. It has the end of course uh, grades, which encourages students to, to complete and encourages campuses not to put people in courses they don't think they can complete. And then of course the Grad Act are the two big parts the in increased tuition, and I talk about the issue of it not being implemented as desired. And then uh, autonomies, which are important, uh, those haven't totally come into fruition, where we need to really encourage the ability to have more autonomies for the institutions that have earned them. Um, the other issue that was talked about yesterday is, uh, sh should, is the solution getting more state money or should it be related on tuition? And I sort of want to address this because when I go and testify, these particular data points are often brought up and we need to make sure that this is known and everybody understands that. Um, this is uh, from the NTEM site. It's about a year old, but when you rank Louisiana state and local support for higher education operating expenses per capita, we're 14th in the nation, which is actually pretty good. Um, when you look at uh, state and local support for higher education uh, per 1,000 of personal income, and this is sort of based on the institution's ability to tax itself to provide that, we're actually very high in our um, support. Uh, for um, higher education compared to others. Um, the most important metric of using these kinds, I would prefer to use the full-time equivalent student ranking, and we're 12th. Uh, but then what you're going to find is this issue of net tuition and fees per full-time student, we're 46th. And then when you add that to all the state dollars, we end up only moving up to 43 in the ranking. And that really talks about that the issue can't all be about um, uh, just the state dollars. The data will say, as we do our need-based formula, that all our um, colleges and universities are underfunded. But one of the real issues in Louisiana is this imbalance between revenue and state investment, and thus uh, institutions' needs are not met. You know, the imbalance can be solved by two ways, one through additional state support. The data would say, and I've had legislators tell me, we're, we're doing our part. Um, or we can address the additional tuition and fee revenue. Uh, both those approaches take effort, um, and we have to think about how to move forward on that. Certainly, state funding stability is essential, um, but tuition has a role to play. Um, if you think about our variance from the peers, this is the most recent data. Um, a lot of the schools that are on the stop loss could address their particular stop loss issues by actually becoming more like their peers in their tuition charging rates and uh, I think we have to con still consider that. The uh, two-year college system has had the ability to get to the SRAB peers. Most of them are there now. Um, LSU Eunice is not in the LCTCS, uh, doesn't have that authority, and they're a, a hair off, and all that impacts their ability to provide the services they need. Um, we talked a little bit last week about how if we can get students to take more credit hours, uh, that they could actually uh, have greater success. Graduation rates are up. Um, but also that it could generate additional revenue for the institutions. And we just did a study that showed of all the colleges and universities in the South, 87.8% of them charge per credit hour. So we are definitely in the minority. And if you actually take out Louisiana, that means 92% in this state or in this uh, part of the South uh, charge per credit hour. So the question is, is our current approach of doing it just at 12 hours, is that problematic? Our graduation rates are lower than others, our student success rates are, are lower than others, and it seems to me that this could be a, a mechanism to address that. If you look at uh, by sector, uh, and this includes the Louisiana institutions, but 93% of the two-year colleges charge per credit hour, and we don't here in this state, and then 88% of the four-year universities do. So 
both of these things are something that we have to address as a collective when we're looking forward uh, to making uh, decisions. Most importantly, we've got to do this as a team. Uh, when we have issues with uh, calculations or whatever, uh, have problems, we'll ask questions. We get a lot of solutions coming up to us, and that collegiality is real important, I think, as we move forward this year um, to have a good uh, a agenda. So funding form the committee, I think, is going to be a big player. Uh, some of the recommendations coming to you next month will be a partial uh, result of that, but we'll be working even after you get that recommendation, the preliminary recommendation, we'll probably work into February uh, working through some of these uh, detailed issues. The tuition task force is coming up, have questions. Uh, that'll be starting out, I think, on the 10th. We've got uh, input from uh, system presidents and campus leaders always, looking at the new national trends, responding to the needs of the state. We've got a lot of workforce folks that uh, really want us to address certain issues. And of course, finally, as a collective, developing a comprehensive higher education legislative strategy. I think that's the most important part of our work this year is to build that team, build a better understanding of how we want to move forward, uh, what we want to address in this session, and whether we want to address all these things at once or uh, pick our, our battles and move forward. Primarily the, the two larger issues were the finance committee reports and the sponsored program reports and I'll kind of go, the rest of it was somewhat housekeeping. The sponsored program uh, report reflects a <clears throat> huge amount of effort from the staff and uh, uh, it, the effort was led by Regent Royal Martin. It was, it, it's a very good thing about a very important uh, aspect. Uh, it's all about the 8G monies and sponsored programs and scholarships and professorships and so forth. Very important and, it's, and with uh, some of the financial circumstances that the state are going through have uh, had a negative impact on the, the programs. Uh, also it's caused us to reorganize, rethink and realign uh, with, in conjunction with uh, the universities and the systems that are affected. Very, very healthy. Uh, hard work, very healthy, lots of people participate. That was a highlight. The other was listening to yesterday the reports of uh, the, the four systems and the continued uh, uh, description of the financial situations they find themselves in. I think uh, we heard from all of them uh, again, which I've spoken to before, the need for stability of what something that they could be planning on, a number or a percentage of or something uh, would be from a management standpoint in my from my position, the Board of Regents position is essential. Uh, we cannot do that by ourselves. We can advise the legislature and the executive branch of that. But I think everyone understands that. And I think another thing that comes out very clearly is that uh, there, the state of Louisiana doesn't have the money. It's not as though someone has it and won't let it, let it be given. It doesn't exist. So we, the populace, this board, the legislature, and the executive branch have to find ways to uh, alternate means of financing uh, all of higher ed, not just uh, one segment of it, all of it. Uh, that could include local option. That could include all sorts of different things. Uh, I don't think we've worked as hard about being creative about that as a state. Uh, the crisis is here. It is not that you look at uh, we some tipping points yesterday. Some while we were up in uh, enrollment last year, uh, the enrollment across the board is going down. Uh, it's changing. There's something that's causing that. It may be that we it's too expensive now for certain people. We need to find those answers if we can. Uh, we don't want to get to where uh, we start putting caps on who can go to college. But we may have to because if you can only educate 100, let's say, and 200 apply, there's only 100 can go because you can't pay for the other two. That happened in California. Uh, I hope we don't, I don't think we're going there. It's not an alarm. But those types of things can and do happen. Based on our um, calculations about what the needs for the institutions are, we certainly believe our institutions are underfunded. I think we're getting about 56 percent of the, the cost of what it actually takes to educate students. And, and when you're funded that low, you take a lot of shortcuts, and uh, I think that's the, the real issue. I think that was the message yesterday, that we're taking a lot of shortcuts and we're beyond the number of uh, shortcuts that we can do and, and still be appropriate. 
and proper for our students. How do you feel personally about the budget meeting yesterday? Oh, I thought it was good. Very healthy. Uh, a lot of conversation. It was very open. Uh, the, uh, the depth of uh, knowledge of the, the uh, leaders of the systems is demonstrated. Uh, their personalities are uh, enjoyable. Uh, they, they're all communicators. That's very healthy. And when people, that's, that's how good policy and good government works. Uh, the word civility came up several times. I'm big on that. Uh, I think it was civil discourse is a good way. When, when the money starts running out, uh, civility seems to follow. <laughs> you know, it gets a little weaker sometimes. And that's human nature. And we all understand that too. Uh, and, and it's okay to have dissent and, and uh, vigorous uh, dialogue, but not, it, it, it cannot be personal. Uh, and it gets that way sometimes. But that's again a, a human nature. Some people get madder quicker than others.